beginning uh, in August 2013, we basically grandfathered any existing residents for a one-year period um, so that they would understand that within a year they you know, would no longer be able to uh, smoke in their apartments or in common areas. It would have to, if they, need, if they wanted to continue to smoke, they would have to um, either go outside to a designated smoking area or uh, outside the development. I'm Scott Pelletier. I'm a Master Level Tobacco Treatment Specialist with Kodak Behavioral Healthcare. And I am here helping out Pawtucket Housing Authority to help residents quit smoking, learn about smoking, and deal with um, people that you may care about who are smoking also. In that policy, we've decided that in August of 2014, we would go entirely smoke-free since our residents would have had a year to start adjusting to, the, to new behaviors. So it's, it's not a you-can't-smoke policy. It's a our buildings, our apartments, um, our campuses are going to be smoke-free. Mainly what we're doing here is we're offering groups and individual counseling for people who are interested in quitting, people aren't too sure about quitting, or people who just want more information about how it affects them or how it affects other people. That's pretty much what we're doing, a kind of a gamut for everybody. You know, there's overwhelming evidence that, uh, you know, secondhand and even thirdhand uh, smoke uh, really uh, can exasperate uh, people's health conditions, uh, especially if you have like an elderly development and you may have people who already have maybe uh, COPD, breathing problems, heart disease. Um, it doesn't take much for the smoke of a next door neighbor's apartment to infiltrate your apartment you know, the way buildings are built. In order to quit, you want to minimize as much stress as possible. If you're at the point where, all right, I got to quit today, it's incredibly stressful. Um, the more time you give yourself, the more opportunity you have to find out what works, what doesn't, um, what changes you can do. Um, especially we advocate that patients talk to the doctor about getting some type of nicotine replacement therapy to help them quit. And by sooner than later, you'll have more opportunity to figure out which one works for you and which one doesn't. Or even if you decide that you want to meet with your doctor for nicotine replacement, then some doctors will do it over the phone and some doctors are like, oh yeah, I'll see you two months from now. So the sooner you get action on it and the sooner you educate yourself and get your coping skills ready and what you're gonna do instead of smoking, when you're ready to quit, it'll be that much easier and less stressful for yourself to quit.